Uh, in the past, we uh, did a three-part lecture on Doppler shift. And uh, part one was non-relativistic Doppler shift for radar and beyond using an E&M e wave representation. And then we did a part two, which we brought into the relativistic part. Then we did a part three, which was a review plus some additional material. But as a result of these three parts, a number of people uh, contacted me. When, when you look at the text that's associated with this video, there is contact information. And they asked me to um, come up with a Doppler shift uh, using wavelength. So we're adding in now a part four, and it's Doppler shift via wavelength. So in part one, the equation that we came up with was, for the non-relativistic case, the Doppler frequency was equal to the original frequency times the quantity 1 minus V over C, where V is the velocity of, of the source, which is emitting the uh, electromagnetic wave that we're looking at. And so now what we want to do is we want to come up with a wavelength expression that will allow us to write down this expression. So we want to do a wavelength derivation and that will also be non-relativistic Doppler. So we'll come over here now and we have a sketch of what we're going to look at. We have a source emitting orange light. And we have an observer R and an observer A. The source and the observers are all stationary. There is no motion. And if a wave is emitted by the source, it's going to be observed by the observer A. And to determine the wavelength, the, you can figure out what the distance here in some time. There are n wavelengths emitted by the source in the time delta t. The wave is traveling at the speed of light. So over a distance c delta t, we will have n waves. Here I've sketched just three, but we'll call it a general n. So there are n waves over that distance. So the wavelength is that distance divided by the number of waves, again, in the general case. And so the emitted wavelength, lambda zero, is equal to C delta T divided by N. And because we'll use it later, we'll calculate, we'll write down the expression for delta T over N here, which is the lambda zero over C. And I put that in a little box so that I remember to use it later. Now down below here, we're going to add in motion. So now the source is moving towards observer A. A stands for approach. The source is moving with a velocity V, and it's approaching observer A. Observer A and R are still fixed. And over here is observer R. The source is receding away from observer R. So the distance that we had C delta T up above, I've reproduced it here, but because the source is moving away from observer R, he will see the wavelength increase over a distance C delta T plus the velocity V delta T. So he sees red light. We're exaggerating here, of course, but this would be a redshift, longer wavelengths over here for the observer what sees the source receding. For the observer over here, who sees the source approaching, everything gets squished together. So again, here's the distance C delta T from up above, but now, because the wave is approaching him, those wavelengths occur over a distance C delta T minus V delta T. So if we look at this case here again, the receding case, 
we could say that the wavelength lambda, let me move over here a little bit, we can say, say that the wavelength lambda is going to be equal to the distance, the V delta T plus the C delta T. We'll write the C delta T first plus the V delta T divided by the number of waves, N. And that is for observer, that's the longer wavelength observed by observer R. It's receding from him. Over here, we would have the wavelength observed by observer A. The source is approaching him, and that will be C delta T minus V delta T over N. And what you can see is the difference between those is keeping the track of the sign. If it's moving, if the source is moving away from you, velocity is positive. If the source is approaching you, the velocity is negative. So we can write it in a general case, keeping in mind what we mean by V and minus V. And so C delta T over N is the original wavelength lambda zero. Lambda zero is equal to C delta T over N. What we started out with with the no, no motion case. So we can write down lambda zero. That's the wavelength that the source is emitting. Plus V. And I wrote down here delta T over N is equal to lambda zero over C. So now we would have V over C times lambda zero. And so we get lambda is equal to lambda zero, factoring out the lambda zero, one plus V over C. And so this is the uh, Doppler case, uh, non-relativistic. And you can see the similarity between the one for the frequency and the one for the wavelength. The frequency one we got in the earlier parts and the wavelength one we got now. And you can see it just took a few really simple steps to get to this expression. Now we want to convert this expression over to that one. So how do we do that? We begin by saying that the speed of light is equal to the wavelength of the light times the frequency. So the wavelength lambda is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. Now what we can say, we're going to be looking at a change in wavelength. So. Um, we could uh, say that our lambda here, Doppler, non-relativistic, minus the original wavelength. We're going to call that delta lambda. And that is equal to lambda zero times V over C. So we want to find a delta lambda. So we'll take the derivative of lambda with respect to F. So we get D lambda over DF is equal to it's F to the minus one minus one times C and subtract one from the negative exponent and so we get F squared. Delta lambda is what we want. So now we can write this in terms of lambda and we can take the DF to the other side. So we would have delta lambda is equal to minus C over F squared 
times delta F. Now, just as our reference with the wavelength was lambda sub zero, our reference with the frequency is also a sub zero. In this case, with the frequency, it'll be an F sub zero. So to be correct, we would write this. Now, we know that delta lambda is equal to lambda zero V over C, so we can put that in. So all we've done is we've manipulated a little bit with what we started out with. We're going to express things in terms of the change in the wavelength, and we're using the differential here on this equation. We convert that over to, to deltas, and right now we have this expression. Now, oh, forgot the sub-zero. So now we can rewrite this lambda zero times V over C. What we have is equal to minus. Now C over F zero is lambda zero. So we get a minus lambda zero over F zero. C over F zero squared. We're taking out the C over F zero. We're making that lambda zero. Then we have the F zero left and then we have the delta F. And the lambda zeros cancel out. So we have V over C is equal to minus 1 over F0. And the delta F is F minus F0. Just as the delta lambda is lambda minus lambda 0, we have F minus F0. And so if we take the F0 to the other side, we'll have F0 times V over C. Uh, bring this F over, we'll multiply by minus 1, we'll bring the F0 over, and we're left with an F on this side. So we wind up with F is equal to F0 times 1 minus V over C. And we can label that as non-relativistic Doppler. So this expression right here is exactly what we had gotten in the earlier parts using a ENM wave representation. Now we've done the same, we've gotten the same result starting out with a wavelength and using this simple argument. So that is how you do that. And let's see, there is one thing I wanted to point out. Let me just check. I don't think I made any mistakes. Okay. The one thing I wanted to point out is if you look at this expression, um, again, the C over F0 will give you a lambda, so let's just write that again. You'll have the delta lambda is equal to lambda 0 over F0 with a minus sign. times the delta F. So in other words, you have F0 delta lambda is equal to minus lambda 0 delta F. Delta lambda, F0, delta F, lambda 0 with a minus sign. And what's the... Uh, significance of that. 
again, this is what we wanted to get to, and so we're just uh, talking about something else here now that is important and that you can see from this relationship. Let's imagine now that you were looking at a spectrum, let's say uh, you're going to look at the solar power density spectrum. And so uh, uh, the units on that would be watts per meter squared per, if we look in terms of wavelength, it would be nanometers. And if we plot nanometers here, we would get a solar spectrum that looks something like that. And the peak here is occurring around the, the green or yellow uh, wavelength. Now we can do the same thing. We can have watts per meter squared per unit frequency, say hertz. So now, whereas this is wavelength here, we would have frequency down here. Now, and that's going to be measured in hertz. So this is hertz or corresponding to the frequency. So we have a curve that looks similar, not exactly the same. But the point is that if you look over some narrow wavelength range at some wavelength, say lambda zero, then if you look over a frequency range, F zero, the relationship between those two is this expression here. So when it turns, when you are looking at spectrums, noise spectrums, various types of spectrums, this happens to be a solar power density. Um, this is a useful relation for going from one to the other. And so, again, what we wanted to do was come up with this expression. And that's what we did.